Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me. People have been asking about that Soviet Venus lander, Cosmos 482. Well, it evidently crashed early this morning um, over the Indian Ocean. The Cosmos 482 probe crashed to Earth today, May 10th, after circling our planet for more than 50 years. Re-entry occurred at 2.24 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time over the Indian Ocean west of Jakarta, Indonesia, according to Russian's space agency, Roscosmos. That's just one estimate, however. Other space agencies and tracking organizations predicted a different re-entry location from the South Asian mainland to the Eastern Pacific. It's unclear when or if we'll get a definitive answer to when Cosmos 482 actually came down. Earth wasn't the planet that Cosmos 482 was supposed to land on. The spacecraft was part of the Soviet Union's Venera program, which sent a fleet of probes to Venus in the 1960s, 1970s, and early 1980s. It was launched in 1972, but a problem with its rocket stranded the spacecraft an elliptical orbit around Earth. And for the next 50 years, atmospheric drag pulled the probe down slowly, but surely leading to today's dramatic ending. Most large pieces of space junk, old satellites and spent rocket bodies, for example, break apart during their fairy trip back to Earth, creating artificial meteor showers. It is possible that Cosmos 482 made it down in one piece today. However, given that it was designed to survive a high-speed trip through Venus' thick atmosphere, it might have been just one piece that ended up there in the Indian Ocean. Cosmos 482 was about 3 by 3 feet or 1 meter wide and weighed about 1,190 pounds. If it didn't break apart during re-entry, it's likely... Uh, when it did her hit the Earth's surface, the water, going about 150 miles an hour. That probably made a good size splash. Cosmo 482 fall draws attention to our planet's growing space junk problem. On average, three sizable pieces of debris crash to Earth every day. And that number is only going up. On average, a piece of space junk the size of Cosmos 482 with about a mass of about a half a ton falls into our atmosphere about once per week. Here I have an image for you. I'll give you a link to this web page of all the different satellites um, that are orbiting your Earth. The uh, reddish one are uncategorized and then they got purple ones which are supposed to be rocket bodies. All the aqua blue dots are supposed to be inactive satellites. Let me pull this out a little bit so you can see. It's like, oh my goodness. What a mess. Think about all the aluminum that is entering our atmosphere and other minerals as they do re-enter to the earth. This is just amazing. Look at that. According to the European Space Agency, ESA, Earth's orbit hosts about 14,240 satellites, 11,400 of those which are active. Most of the operational craft belong to SpaceX Starlink, broadband mega constellation, which currently consists of about 7,200 satellites, but is growing all the time. Other mega constellations are under construction as well. For example, Amazon just launched its first batch of spacecraft for its Project Kuiper Broadband Network, which will eventually harbor 3,200 satellites. And rockets have lofted satellites for two different Chinese mega constellations, each of which are designed to host at least 13,000 spacecraft. With the increasing space traffic, we expect that re-entry frequency increase further into the future. They keep saying that risk of injury of people or property damage from each individual re-entry is very small, given that 
much debris gets burned up in the air and pieces that don't usually come down in the ocean or un unoccupied land. I think about the different people that have had that stuff come through their homes. But as the re-entry volume goes up, so too do the odds of a destructive impact. There was one woman that got hit by a meteorite. Um, yeah, it's just a matter of time before some person actually gets hit with a, a piece of an old satellite. There are other potential consequences as well. For instance, researchers are calling attention to the pollution created by re-entering satellites. I talked about the aluminum, which could damage Earth's ozone layer and also affect our planet's climate. In the past, old spacecraft made up barely a drop among the thousands of tons of meteorites falling to Earth each year. However, the rise of mega constellations, which can comprise of hundreds or even thousands of satellites, meant the proportion of human-made space debris began to rise. For example, up to 200 metric tons of dead satellites evaporated in Earth's atmosphere in 2023, according to estimates presented at a workshop on protecting Earth and outer space from the disposable spacecraft and debris held at the University of Southampton in the UK. They believe that by 2033, the annual amount of incinerated satellite trash could reach 3,600 metric tons, and that's more than 20% the amount of natural space rocks. Satellites are made of an alloy containing aluminum and other metals, that oxidize into chemical compounds not otherwise present in the atmosphere. The most concerning of those is the aluminum oxide, which acts like a sunscreen in the atmosphere, preventing sunlight from penetrating closer to the surface. Yeah, and here the UK wants to uh, uh, chemtrail the atmosphere to block out the sun when we already got so much of it going on there in space. This human-induced cooling on the planet's climate cannot be predicted. Yeah, they don't know what it's going to affect. The weather, uh, make it where plants can't grow because plants are affected by the aluminum. Yeah, it kills their root systems. It is also known to damage the ozone, the gas that prevents harmful UV radiation from reaching the Earth's surface. The only thing they have right now is called a liability convention which was signed in 1972. It holds uh, different countries which launch spacecraft liable for damage caused on the territory of other countries. The convention also covers damage to aircraft and other satellites in orbit. There is also a 1967 document treaty called the Outer Space Treaty, but neither document, however, makes any mention of wider environmental consequences of space activity on Earth. So maybe the re-entry of this Russian satellite might bring up that subject about all the space junk. There certainly is a lot of it and too much and the consequences is growing. The danger is growing. What are your thoughts? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and thumbs up my videos. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.